We've walked quite a lot to get here, but it seems like there's nothing around. No, we must not let our guard down yet. This dungeon should be hiding a mathematical mystery. Ah, uh, watch out! What? Oh no, this is a trap. We can't move forward unless we solve this mystery. Well, there's no choice. Let's do it! Uh, two raised to the power of infinity? Two is being multiplied infinitely many times. It would grow infinitely large. It's a suspicious looking expression. Oh, it seems there's more. Hmm, I see. What is this? Zeros are going on infinitely? And the result is zero? I don't get it at all. Where did the infinitely continuing two go? For now, calm down. Oh yes. This two seems to represent binary notation. Let's start by investigating that. When we represent numbers in binary, first zero is zero, and one is also just one. But if you add one to one in binary, it carries over, and the answer becomes one zero. Next, it becomes one one, and adding one again makes it carry over once more, resulting in one zero zero. Oh right, that's how it works. Okay, let's focus on these for now. There's some kind of pattern? If we extract just these, it looks like this. Hmm, I see. This is... They take the forms of powers of two. The exponents correspond to the numbers of zeros. That's how it is. Just as multiplying by ten in decimal shifts, the digits to the left, multiplying by two in binary shifts, the digits to the left. If we continue this, two cubed becomes one zero zero zero. And if we continue infinitely, in 2 to the infinity, zeros continue infinitely. And the answer becomes 0, because all the digits become zeros. That... that's impossible. Such a thing shouldn't be allowed. There's something wrong with this logic. Since it goes like 1, 2, 4, 8, the numbers should keep getting bigger. Then 2 to the infinity should also become infinity. There's no way it could become 0. What Sundaman says makes sense. To begin with, the notation 2 to the infinity feels a bit suspicious. Even putting that aside, this logic feels quite off. But I... I've seen a world where this logic holds true. What? Yes, that world is... known as p-adic numbers. p-adic numbers? That sounds so mysterious. Here, p represents a prime number. While there is only one real number system, for each prime number p, there exists a separate p-adic number system. From now on, let's fix p as a specific prime number. For example, let's take p equals 3. p-adic numbers, have properties that are in a way opposite to real numbers, so it's easier to understand by contrasting them with real numbers. For instance, consider a real number like this. Hmm, this is what they call a finite decimal. Exactly, because the digits after the decimal point are finite. But in the real number world, having infinitely many digits after the decimal point is allowed. Now let's consider a number in base 3. This is just a rational number, but here's where the real fun begins. In the world of p-adic numbers, it's allowed for the integer part to continue infinitely. Conversely, it's not allowed for the fractional part to continue infinitely. Note that this is a p-adic number when p equals 3. Huh, what do you mean? Digits extending infinitely to the left? That's impossible. Well, it might be hard to accept at first, but the surprising part is yet to come. In p-adic numbers, the concept of closeness is different. For example, in the real number world, consider a number like this. Hmm, there are four zeros after the decimal point. It's a number quite close to zero. That's right. In the real number world, the more zeros you have here, the closer the number is to zero. But in p-adic numbers, this concept is reversed. Integers are considered closer to zero, the more zeros they have, starting from the one's place. Ah, uh, this is considered close to zero? It looks way bigger than zero to me. This is the essential characteristic of p-adic numbers. By the way, the definition of p-adic numbers I just explained is quite an intuitive one, so please bear that in mind. Defining p-adic numbers rigorously is rather challenging. I see. Now let's go back to the problem. So is 2 to the infinity really 0? The answer is, if we interpret these as 2-adic numbers, the zeros starting from the 1's place continue to increase, so the value can be considered to approach 0. Therefore, the limit can be said to be zero. Um, is that how we think about it? Well, it is an interesting story. But does thinking about this actually lead to anything good? Well, you see... Ah, look at that! In the middle of a discussion, what is it this time? Okay, another troublesome thing has appeared. Powers of two are being added up infinitely. It looks like it's diverging to infinity. But it says the result is negative one. This is fascinating. 
since it says p equals 2, could this also be about p-adic numbers? Is that what it means? Well, let's take it step by step. First, in this infinite sum, how would we represent the powers of 2 in binary? Uh, 1 is represented as 1 in binary 2. And 2 is represented as 1, 0 in binary. And 2 squared is represented as 1, 0, 0. This pattern continues indefinitely. So, the first digit, the second digit, the third digit, and so on, it keeps going. The ones continue indefinitely to the left. Based on this result, the equality about the sum of powers of 2 that we saw earlier can be rewritten like this. Because we know these two expressions are equal, and if we move the negative one to the left-hand side, it becomes like this. So if we can prove this equality, then we can also prove the original equality. Ah, uh, this addition is... Let's try calculating it. When you add 1 to a number with an infinite sequence of 1s, the first digit becomes 0, and 1 is carried over. Adding the next 1 and the carried over 1 makes it 0 again, and carries over 1. Since this continues infinitely, indeed the answer is 0. Therefore, since this equality holds, this original equality also holds. So that's how it is. Well done. Now then, doesn't this equality, which holds when p equals 2, look familiar to you? Huh? I've never seen such a strange equality before. Then, how about this one? Ah, this, this is, it's the formula for geometric series, the sum of the geometric sequence. Thank you for explaining it. I see, so this equality is the result of substituting r equals 2 into the formula for geometric series. That's correct. Wait, but for a geometric series, doesn't it only converge if the absolute value of r is less than 1? If that's the case, we can't substitute r equals 2. This is mysterious. It seems like there's a strange connection between real numbers and p-adic numbers, but something weird is happening between them. Let's investigate what exactly is going on. For now, it might be a good idea to look into the step just before a geometric series. This is the formula for the partial sum of a geometric sequence. For the sequence 1r r squared, and so on, the sum of the terms up to r to the n minus 1 is given by this simple fraction. You remembered well. Then, when the absolute value of r is less than 1, and we increase the number of terms infinitely, that is letting n approach infinity, r to the n converges to 0, so this part disappears, and we get the formula for geometric series. So far so good. Now, let's try doing the same thing in the world of p-adic numbers. It seems difficult, but let's give it a shot. First, let's substitute p for r in the formula for the partial sum of a geometric sequence. Then we get an equality like this. Since this is a finite sum, we don't need to worry about convergence. And then, we increase the number of terms infinitely. In other words, letting n approach infinity, p to the n. Um, what would happen to it? For now, try representing it in base p. I'm not sure I get it, but okay. When p to the n is expressed in base p, it looks like this. In base p, multiplying by p shifts the digits one place to the left. So multiplying by p n times starting from 1, results in this. Now if we let n approach infinity once again, the number of zeros increases infinitely, so in the p-adic world, this converges to zero, is that correct? You're starting to understand the world of p-adic numbers too. So since p to the n converges to zero, yes, we can derive an equality in the same form as the geometric series formula. From this equality, which holds in p-adic numbers, if we specifically consider the case where p equals two, we indeed arrive at this equality. The real number world and the p-adic number world their properties are vastly different, but the structures of the proofs we just saw were surprisingly similar. Chaotic numbers. At first I thought why would anyone think about this, but there is a fascinating world different from real numbers. It seems you've come to understand. By the way, chaotic numbers. Why does key have to be a prime number? That's quite a tricky question. It's hard to answer rigorously in mathematical terms. Then let's hypothetically set p equals 10. 10 is not a prime number because it's divisible by 2 and 5. Now consider this kind of multiplication. Since p equals 10, this is written in base 10 notation. But both numbers have digits that continue infinitely. If you actually calculate this, you'll find the result is 0. Ah, is that true? 
Even though you're multiplying two non-zero numbers, the result becomes zero. To put it simply, this happens because p equals 10 is not a prime number. This is an interesting result in its own way, but... When the product of two numbers is zero, at least one of them must be zero. The world where this logic doesn't hold, can be considered a troublesome world very different from real numbers. This is a rough explanation of why p is taken as a prime number, when thinking about p-adic numbers. I see! Anyway, p-adic numbers are actually known to be simpler than real numbers in some sense. What do you mean? P-adic numbers seem so far from intuition. I think real numbers are much simpler. Then consider this kind of p-adic number. It doesn't really matter if it has a fractional part, but let's take the simple example of a p-adic integer. If you break this down into its digits, a0, a10, a200, and so on. Here, as you move forward, the zeros keep increasing, meaning the values you're adding approach zero. Hmm, I see that's how it works. With that in mind, even though the digits extend infinitely to the left, it feels like it could converge somewhere, but still, it's a bit puzzling. More generally, ah, I know this one. If an infinite sum of a sequence converges, then the sequence itself must converge to zero. But the converse isn't necessarily true. That's certainly a well-known fact in the real number world that... In the chaotic number world, it's actually known that the converse also holds true. No way that's impossible. In other words, in chaotic numbers, the conditions for the convergence of an infinite sum can be expressed very simply. That, that's true. You just need to check if the sequence converges to zero. This is just one example, but it shows how, in some sense, the world of p-adic numbers is simpler than real numbers. P-adic numbers, they're not to be underestimated. At first glance it might seem like an eccentric idea, but its applications range widely, from number theory to quantum mechanics. Okay, the mystery has been solved, so let's move on. Well then, take care everyone. See you again!